It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hands of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They all were planning to arrest and destroy Jesus quietly so as to avoid popular revolt among the Jews. At this time, Jesus was lodging at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. While he was there, a woman approached and anointed him with an alabaster jar of pure nard. When his disciples saw the act, they were outraged. Why this waste? Master, this costly ointment could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor, hungry, and homeless. The poor are always with you. Indeed, I tell you that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, that this, what this woman has done will be told in her memory. Then one of the twelve, named Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, went to the priests and asked, you are afraid of crowds, aren't you? What if I could deliver Jesus to you at night? When they heard the offer, they were glad and promised Judas 30 pieces of silver. From that hour, he sought an opportunity to turn Jesus over, hoping that would incite a revolution against Rome. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, Where do you wish to prepare this? I show you. Passable meal. Go into the city and you will see there is a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar who brought them to a large upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief. Surely not I, nor I. You don't understand. That's not it. The betrayer is one of you dipping his hand into the dish with me. The Son of Man is fulfilling scripture, but woe to that one through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Judas slipped out into the night to put his plot into motion. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After reciting the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. Then taking the cup with the traditional blessing, he gave it to his disciples. This is my blood of the covenant which is shed for many. I tell you in truth that I shall not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it fresh in the kingdom of God. Then having sung a hymn, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, you will desert me this very night. So it, so it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Though all desert, I will remain by you. I tell you truly that this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples. Jesus halted at an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on watch and continued a little further alone. There he fell on his face in anguished prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again Jesus went apart in troubled prayer, and again he returned to find the disciples sleeping. For their eyes were heavy. A third time Jesus withdrew to pray, and a third time he found the disciples sleeping. Sleep on and finish your rest. Now is the time for the Son of Man to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now Judas had arranged with the authorities for a sign and had said, The man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with this agreement, Judas went directly to Jesus. Greetings, Master. Then he gave him a kiss. Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? I am not here to betray you, but to help you. Immediately, the soldiers laid hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples with Jesus drew a sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. Sheathe your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. 
Do you not know that I can call upon God, who will respond at once with more than twelve legions of angels? Then, turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come for me against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple, where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the Jewish people that you must come for me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are fulfilling in the words of the prophets. Then all his disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council, and they began to arrange the case against Jesus, which they would present to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be king of the Jews, and they brought in many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, two came forward. We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple with my hands. And within three days, build another one. No made with him. Not made with him. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over temple affairs, which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel. And in those days, Israel was ruled by Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges? Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. Then the high priest put the question of kingship mm -hmm. in terms of the royal titles, anointed and son of God. Are you the anointed one, the son of the blessed? I am, and you shall see the son of man seated on the right hand of power, coming into the clouds of heaven. What need we have of witnesses? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and were striking him as they taunted him. O oh, anointed one, mm -hmm. prophecy who it is who is striking you. Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small slave girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, You were also with this Jesus the Nazarene. I do not know what you are talking about. Peter went outside to the, into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. The slave girl followed him out and said to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you speak with a Galilean accent. Then Peter began to swear with an oath. I do not know this person of whom you are speaking. But the cock interrupted him as it crowed for the second time. Immediately Peter remembered how Jesus said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. When morning arrived, all of the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation. Here we, he, he was forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaimer himself as, and proclaiming himself as anointed king. Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The priests were accusing him of many things. Have you no answer to give? Look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astonished Pilate by remaining silent. At that festival, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. Now there was a notable rebel in prison with those who had committed murder during the insurrection. His name was Jesus Barabbas. Therefore, the priests arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? Barabbas! What shall I do then with Jesus the Anointed One? Crucify him! Crucify him! Are you certain of his guilt? The crowd took up the chant. 
Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. Then Pilate agreed to release Jesus Barabbas. But Jesus, the anointed king, he handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion. When Judas saw that Jesus had refused to help himself, that the people had deserted him, Judas realized his own sin of pride and repented his betrayal. He went to the priests. I have sinned in betraying God's anointed one. What is that? What is that to us? That is your affair. Judas threw down the thirty pieces of silver in the temple and fled. His anger and shame blinded him to the purpose of God in the crisis, and he hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the priest said, It is awful to put this silver into the treasury, for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore that field is known to this day as the field of blood. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. There they assembled the whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for, his, for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him. Hail, King of the Jews! They also spat upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then, after mocking him, they took away the purple, returned his own clothes, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road, they met an African of Cyrene named Simon, coming in from the countryside. Him they compelled to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. There they crucified him. It was nine in the morning. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting lots for them. Over his head they inscribed the charge against him, the king of the Jews. Also there were two insurrectionists crucified with him, one on his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in derision. So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself, come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators, collaborators mocked him. He saved others himself, he cannot save. Let the anointed king, the king of Israel, come down from the cross and we may see and believe. Even the two crucified with him reviled him. Now from midday there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Look, he is calling for Elijah. One of the bystanders put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it to his lips. Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath. Suddenly, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Even the tombs of the dead were opened. Now when the centurion on watch and the others who were with him saw all that was taking place, they were filled with awe. Truly, this man was God's royal son.